Welcome back. In the last video, we looked at an ideal mass and spring system, and we found that its motion is described by this differential equation here. d squared x over dt squared is equal to negative k divided by m times x. Now, we still don't actually know what x is as a function of time. In this video, we're going to try and find a solution for x that satisfies this differential equation by looking at the motion of the spring. Now before we start, I propose we make one quick substitution. Let's say that the constants k over m is equal to another constant, omega squared. Another way of saying this is, let's say that omega is equal to radical k over m, and this makes our differential equation negative omega squared x instead of negative k over m times x. Now you may be saying, Dave, why are you doing this? I don't understand what was wrong with k over m. What is this omega? Why are we plugging that in instead? Now, I assure you that although it looks odd, this will actually make the math work out a lot better at the end of the day. And we'll actually figure out that omega actually does have physical significance. I also want to point out that although it looks unusual, this is indeed a legal substitution. Because what's k and m? K and M are both constants. They don't have any time dependence. So they're not going to mess up this differential equation by adding in additional time dependencies. Essentially, we're just replacing one constant with a different looking constant that has the same value. So with that under a belt, let's take a look at this mass and spring again. Now let's start off by, let's say here's the resting length. We're going to start off by displacing the mass the distance x. So here we see the mass. Here's the spring all stretched out. Now, if we start it off by moving it back x, and then we're going to let go, what's going to happen? Well, we know from everyday experience, and we know from Hooke's law, it's going to try and move back towards the resting length. So it's going to feel a force to try and restore it to its natural length. So, it feels a force towards the left, and starts moving towards the left, and as it moves, it picks up more and more speed. Eventually, it reaches its resting length. Let's just draw that out. Now, at this particular moment in time, it doesn't feel any forces, but it's picked up a lot of momentum moving from here to here. So it's not going to stop. Instead, it's going to overshoot and move towards the left. And it's going to keep moving towards the left, and eventually it's going to be cr all compressed up like here. Say, use the resting length. Once it's moved past the resting length, it's going to start feeling a force in the opposite direction to try and move it back towards the resting length. So it feels a force towards the right, but it still has momentum going towards the left. So it's going to move to the left, but it's going to slow down. It's going to slow down, slow down, eventually stop, give in, and start moving back towards the resting length. And the same thing's going to happen. It's going to pick up speed, overshoot, go to the right, slow down, stop, move back, pick up speed, overshoot, and it's going to oscillate back and forth. This isn't anything unusual, it's just what springs do. So let's plot this. So let's try and plot position of the mass as a function of time. And let's, to make things simple, say that the resting length, we're just going to set that equal to zero, and we're going to start off at time t equals zero with the mass at this distance x. So what's going to happen? Well, we know it's going to try and move towards the resting length, overshoot, then try and move back, overshoot, and it's going to oscillate. And if there's no other resistance, if there's no other air drag or friction, it's going to keep oscillating like this forever. But what is this right here? It's just a cosine wave. So if a cosine wave describes how the spring moves, perhaps a cosine wave will dis satisfy this differential equation here. Let's test it out and see. Let's try and see, maybe set, say x of t is equal to cosine now we need to give it a frequency. Let's give it an arbitrary frequency, b times time. 
Now, let's see if this actually satisfies this differential equation. How are we going to do that? Well, we're just going to plug it in. We're going to take this value of x of t, plug it in on the right side. Then we're going to take the second derivative of this term, plug it on the left side, and see if they're equal. So let's just do the derivatives out now. So we have dx dt is equal to derivative of the cosine is a negative sine bt. And then with the chain rule, we have to multiply it by initial b term, which is the derivative of the inside. So that's the first derivative. The second derivative is d squared x over dt squared is equal to negative derivative of sine bt is cosine bt. We get an additional b term. So we get negative b squared cosine bt. So that's d squared x over dt squared. And let's just plug it in, that into our differential equation. So we get negative b squared cosine bt is equal to, what's on the right hand side, negative omega squared times x, and x is cosine bt. Well, it looks like it works. Let's just simplify it out a bit. Let's divide by negative cosine bt on both sides. We get b squared is equal to omega squared, or b is equal to omega. Now, what does this mean? This mean that, means that our function x of t equals cosine bt works and satisfies this differential equation provided that b is equal to omega. Or, just to put it another way, means that x of t is equal, equals cosine omega t satisfies this differential equation and describes the motion of the spring. So we did it. We found a solution. Now let's just take a look at this for one second. Here we see that the frequency is omega. What we, omega is what we uh, used as substitution earlier. So we see that this actually does have physical significance. It's the, the frequency with which the spring oscillates. And that frequency is negative k, a, sorry, it's radical k over m. So everything did indeed work out in the end. Now let's take a look at another case. Let's say instead here we go, let's just draw that out here. Instead of initially displacing it, what would happen if we start out with addition, a different initial condition? What would happen if we had the spring at the resting length initially, but instead of moving it, we just gave it a kick? So we didn't impart an initial displacement, but we gave it an initial velocity. What's going to happen? Well, we know from experience it's going to move out towards the right, feel a force towards the left and going to move back, overshoot, slow down, stop, move back towards the rest, resting length, overshoot, and it's going to oscillate back and forth. So what's that going to look like? Let's just plot it out here. Here we have x, this is time. So instead of starting out at the displacement x, we're going to start out at its resting length, x naught. Instead it's just going to move from there, and it's going to oscillate back and forth. So what's this? This is just a sine wave. Maybe like before, maybe a sine, maybe a sine function will actually satisfy this, differential, this original differential equation as well. Well, let's just test it out and see. Let's say that x t is equal to sine Let's give it another arbitrary frequency. Let's call it ct. Now we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to take the derivative of this and plug it into our differential equation and see if it works. So dx dt is equal to derivative of sine is cosine ct times the derivative of the inside, which is c. And the second derivative, d squared x over dt squared, is equal to derivative of cosine is the negative sine. We get another uh, c term, so we're going to get negative c squared sine ct. And we're going to plug that into our original differential equation right up here, like before. So we're going to get negative c squared sine 
CT is equal to negative omega squared times x. x is just sine CT. And like before, we can simplify this off. We get C squared is equal to omega squared, or C equals omega. And like before, what does this mean? This means that sine x is equal to sine ct will satisfy the differential equation provided that the frequency c is equal to omega. Which, another way of saying that, is that x of t is equal to sine omega t is indeed a solution that describes the motion of the spring and satisfies the, in the initial differential equation right here. So what do we do? We looked at two initial setups, once by displacing it and once by giving it a kick, and we found two solutions that satisfied the differential equation. Now, what we want to try and do is try and find a general solution that will describe all possible setups initially. But in the interest of time, let's try to do that in the next video, so I will see you soon.